Hey everybody, Phineas Rage here. This is Minecraft for Kids, and today we're talking about how to win the game. And you're saying, but Finn, you already did a video on how to, to fight the Under Dragon. In fact, look, here's here's the egg, Finn. It's right here. It's right here. And I say, that's true. I did. I did do that. However, today we're going to talk about how to do the entire thing from start to finish, right? How to go from your very first day to building a beautiful house to fighting the Ender Dragon and thereby technically winning the game. Now, I say technically because Minecraft is a sandbox game of endless adventure and, and magical wonderfulness, right? And so really, there's always more, more Minecraft to do, right? But technically, if you beat the Ender Dragon, you have won the game, and then you keep playing because Minecraft never ends, right? So today, before we get that started, we are going to go over here behind this house, and there's a skeleton horse that has been trapped on this one block for basically almost forever, well, since I moved in over here. And today, we're going to try to to get him out of there. I should have brought a shovel to dig my way around there. See, first, can I see if I even get on? Let's see. Ugh. Okay, I, I am on the horse. That is good. The horse, the horse seems fine. Your face is in the wall, sir, though. Okay, the horse seems okay with this. Maybe I can kind of put the saddle on right now. Oh, well, that was easy. But, oh, careful. Oh, the horse doesn't have very many hit points at all. Oh, my, the horse is a very fragile horse. All right, let's put this very fragile horse over here in the stables with this less fragile horse named, uh, I don't know, Pete? Yeah, Pete. Okay, I'll get you a name tag, Pete. And you'll you'll stay here, and you can be Bones, and you can be Pete, and we'll, we'll get a better name for you, Bones. But for now, you'll just be Bones. All right, there we go. In any case, let's talk about how to win the game. Let's start with the very first day. If you are lucky, you will start in a nice place like this with trees and, and animals and all that stuff around here and, and rocks to get to. So that's fantastic. So first we're going to get out of this tree down here. And this is probably going to hurt a little bit, but you know, whatever. Ah, ugh, okay, not so bad. Not so bad. There it is. So I turned on the bonus chest and I recommend doing this, right? It just saves you some time. It saves, uh, you know, minutes at a time, which is great, you know. And some people might say, oh, it's too easy. Well, you know, it's fine. If you want to spend five minutes gathering stuff, that's... That's up to you. That's fine. Go right ahead. In the meantime, I'm going to grab this and do something else with those five minutes. So once we have these things, we need to get wool and we need to get food. So we're going to start on these sheep. We take the axe here and whoopsa, one hit if we do it with a critical hit. So you jump up in the air and when you're coming down, whoopsa, there you go. You, you swing with the axe and whoopsa, there we go. Okay, we have three wool now, I hope. Yes, we have three wool. It's enough for a bed. That's great. We have enough wood for a crafting table. And the first thing we want to do now, or rather the next thing we want to do, since we have some fish and we have an apple and some mutton meat, and well, actually just, just straight up mutton, not mutton meat, that's redundant. Whoops, let's get in here. In this, we're going to swim across this ocean to get that coal you can see over there, and also some stone so we can get started making stone tools. Now that we're over here, we are going to take this wooden pick and we are going to grab three pieces of stone. Only three because that's going to save us some time. We're going to go into our crafting table here, take a... Uh, one of these, boom, boom. Just gonna put it down anywhere like this. We're gonna get some more stone here. We need eight more pieces of this to make a furnace and two more to make a sword, which we want. And then we might also want to get some for an ax so we can get more wood, which we'll need pretty soon. Let's see how we're we doing here. Okay, so we have 10, that's enough for a furnace and a sword. Let's get three more, uh, that's for an ax. And let's get three more for another stone pick just in case. But this is great. Look at this. This is, we're high up, up here, and maybe there's monsters up there, but we can build sort of an overhang. If we dig into this wall right here a little bit, this is pretty good. Look at this. All right, we make, we make a little thing like this, and then we'll do the same thing, making a little three by three right in here. Then we take three wood like this, and three wool we got earlier, make this, boom, we got a bed, and pop it down there. Fantastic. We can put this in here with that and start that cooking. Oh, in fact, I should have shown you something else you can do. You can always take your old wooden pick you don't need, put that in there too. Eventually that'll burn up. It's enough to burn one thing, so so that's useful. All right, get some mutton. Fantastic. Plenty of food on our bar. Now we just need a door, which we can make um, using a bunch of this stuff. Here, wood. Okay, become wood, you become a door. I really wish it would just make the recipe show up immediately. Boom, door. Oh, look, it's a nice acacia wood door. And there we go. All right, we got this. We need to make some torches. And we have torches right here. Okay, fantastic. And boom. Now we have a house, and we can get the coal out of the ceiling. Fantastic. Now, we've got that all set up, so let's see real quick. Let's go get a sword. All right, so I have a sword. That's fantastic. And we need to get iron, hopefully, before the sun goes down. Hopefully, we can do that and get back home. 
Now we're, oh wow, llamas. Okay, we'll deal with llamas later. In the meantime, let's see if we can find some iron. Ooh, this is cool. It's probably, yeah, there's iron down there. However, it might be a little dangerous to get down there. Maybe we can find iron closer to the ground. Now I'm a little high up to find iron here, so I need to get a bit further down. We're gonna go here into the woods. This seems like a pretty good place. Oh, look, fantastic. So if you can find a cave that goes down, you can probably find some, this isn't a cave at all. All right, but usually you'll find something like that around here. Let's see if we can find a cave. Oh, look, there might be a cave. Okay, this is a cave, not too far from home. Let's put this here, and we'll just remember that we came from over there. All right, great, I should have put a torch by my door. Oh, look, iron, fantastic. So let's see, we wanna get down here carefully. Let's make a little staircase so we can. Let's grab some of this, get some blocks on the bar. We don't need those doors there. I'm gonna put that there, fantastic. And you're a little stairway now. No monsters, no monsters. Okay, good. And whoops, there we go. No monsters, no monsters. Okay, oh, but there's our dungeon. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic. Well, that's lucky. We won't deal with that just yet. We're gonna grab this iron. We only need three to start, but let's grab as much as we can while we're here. Keep looking out for monsters, don't see any yet. We'll put down this torch. We're just gonna take a quick look because I'm curious. We don't need this today. But what do we have over here? Zombies. All right, cool. Well, that's fantastic. So we're not going to worry about those because a, a dungeon like that is a lucky find, right? And we're not going to deal with that. We're not going to pretend, or rather, we're going to pretend we didn't find it. Now we have iron, we have coal, we have food. We have officially hit the end of the first part of the game. This is the very beginning. The sun is about to go down. We're going to go home. We have some food, we have tools. And then in the morning, which will be very soon because we have a bed, right? We can go down into the ground and start looking for diamonds. Now that we have iron, I have fast forwarded a little bit because this is all stuff that you do once you get iron. And I am in creative right now because we're going to do that for the rest of the video just to speed things along, okay? So once you have iron, I recommend taking a little break and setting up a little situation like this. Build yourself a little house to whatever degree of fanciness or non-fanciness you desire and build yourself a little that uh, thing over here for wheat and you want some cows and also the chickens are optional but I recommend getting some chickens just because they're easy to take care of okay so the wheat is for making more cows the wheat seeds are for making more chickens the cows are for beef and leather the leather along with this sugar cane over here makes paper and the leather and the paper become books which you'll need later and of course this is great for making sugar which you can use in fancy treats and also in potions okay so first get this set up. Let's talk about the house for a moment. Now I just threw this together in creative. I threw a bunch of bits and bobs on everything to give it detail and depth and I don't know if this is actually any good. It kind of looks weird but let's take a look at what we can do. All right this is a basic simple house with some decorations some flowers. That's a cactus growing over there. I made this little guy. I could have dyed the leather armor and made him even fancier but I did not I did not take the time and I'm not sure I will, I will leave him here. Sometimes you come in the door you come in the door, you're like, okay, hey, nice house here. And you go, oh, hey, sorry, man. I, well, oh, it's not, you're not real. You're just a, a, a pumpkin-headed thing. Okay, great. And we have a thing up here. We have this bedroom. This is pretty nice. Now, the bookshelves serve no purpose other than to look pretty classy. Like, oh, look at all these fancy bookshelves you have. Very nice. The chests are here for storage. I've got stairs above them so you can still open them, which is great. There's nothing in any of these. They're just, just for show. And I have a bed up here just for, you know, respawning in. And here we go, controlling the sun. In fact, let's control the sun right now while we're at it. Kabwam! Now, I also built a basement, and this is perhaps the most important part. This part right here. These double doors, once you have iron and stuff, you don't have to spend too much time in caves because you're going to dig a mine really, really soon, right? So once you have a bunch of that stuff, or before you do, if you start, you start digging down. You dig staircases down here. And as you go, you're going to get a lot of cobblestone, which you can make into stairs, right? You're going to grab a bunch of coal. You're going to find a bunch of iron. You'll kind of dig that out of the wall. That'd be great as you go. And so this is, you don't have to go digging in caves for iron because you'll find it as you go down these stairs, okay? Now, if you don't know about depth, take a look at the, uh, the F3 key on the computer there. Blam, on the keyboard. You see that second paragraph of text over there on the left, which is XYZ? Okay, you want the middle number, which is Y, which is how high up or down you are in the world. And you want to go down, I think to 13 is pretty good. You can go down to 11 or 12 and those, those numbers, but a lot of people like 13, and that's what I like. Because on 13, there are diamonds. Like, for instance, kablam! Diamonds. Lots of diamonds over there. There's some gold. Uh, there's some of this stuff over here. Now, here's some, some good stuff to know about diamonds, okay? When you first find them, before you have anything else, make sure you have a, let's get an iron pick. We need an iron pick. Where do you go? Oh, there you go. Boom. 
You need at least an iron pick. You could also use a gold pick if that's something you want to do for some reason, just for funsies. All right, and what are you going to do? You need to get at least, oh, right. I mean, creative. You need to get five diamonds. Okay, let's pretend we got five diamonds. Once you have five diamonds, think to yourself, maybe I should go home where it's safer. And take your five diamonds all the way back up here. All right, and we'll talk about why that is in a moment. It occurs to me that while we're down here, we might as well discuss branch mining, right? Or just mining for diamonds. There's many different ways to do this. This is one way I like to do it. And, you know, you can, you can research this on your own and figure out what you want to do because there are advantages and disadvantages to all of them, right? So let's talk about the advantages here. Now we're on 13, okay, which is great. It means we can see 12, uh, it's 13, 14, and we can see 15 as well. So that, that's pretty great. We can see a lot of areas where diamonds could be. And so you go in here, one, two, three, four, five to this. Once you have that, you dig out three more. You dig one, you dig two. Say, so, well, one again. Back over here, you do the same thing on this side. And I dug out a bit there because I found stuff, right? And that's what you'll do. You just keep repeating this pattern as you go digging like this. And what that does is it shows you so many blocks, right? Now, there is a block you'll miss. You won't see what this block is or the blocks like right in there necessarily, okay? But the good news is, the good news is that diamonds rarely spawn just one block. You'd usually see at least part of the spawn right there. So this is a pretty good way to do it. It's pretty fast. I enjoy it. Just keep doing it. Find diamonds and junk. And again, once you find diamonds, Take them home, and you're going to make some enchanting tables and diamond picks and all sorts of cool stuff like that pretty soon, all right? And you can take the gold if you want it, and leave the redstone for now. You don't need it, all right? Wait till you have a magic pick. Same thing with lapis lazuli. You want to take a little bit of it if you find it. Take it home for enchanting, but leave a bunch of it so you can come back when you have fortune. Same thing with all the other diamonds. Like, for instance, I go all the way down to the end of this, this thing over here, and I think it's over... Is it here? No, I think it's over here. Yeah, I found more diamonds. But I'm going to leave these here until I have a magic pick so I can get even more diamonds out of this, right? So patience. Patience, my friends. All right, back home. Okay, so we're back in the basement, and we've got all these things here, right? And so we're going to take three of these diamonds like that, kabwam, and take two of these, kabwam. There we go. Take our diamond pick, and we're also going to want this bucket of water. I'll show you why soon. And we're going to take the other two diamonds, and we're going to, we're going to put them in a box. We're going to put them where they're safe. We're going to leave them there. We're not going to take them with us because then if we die, they're gone forever. Okay, well, maybe not, but we'd have to go get them. And if there's lava down there, we don't want to lose them in lava because we are going down to find obsidian. Now we have diamond. We need four pieces of obsidian, right? Now, you could go and you could get all the obsidian you need for another portal too, right? Which is at least 10. I recommend 12. So you can make a nice, you know, three by three symmetrical one. All right? So let's see. We want to find... We want to find lava. So we go down to about, what are we at, 10 right now? Well, 12 is better. And we can see 12. So we're going to go looking for lava. you got to go to around 12 or so. And you dig until you find it. You just dig in a line and you'll eventually find it. You hear it maybe in the walls. Get some iron on the way. And just dig towards it. Ooh, lava is only sweet. So we grab some of this for enchanting. Let's pretend we did. All right, you see, that was very, you see, we got here, we were like, oh, lapis lazuli. I listened, I was like, oh, I think there's lava over there. And there is, there's both water and lava. So that's, that's cool. And this will be great for our purposes, right? So there might even be diamonds and stuff in That's pretty cool. All right, so we have the water. The water is very important. Remember this, all right? Put the water, kablam, like that. Water on uh, source lava, of course, makes obsidian. I forgot, we need another bucket here. We need just a basic empty bucket to reverse this because we're in creative. Okay, blam. You see how that works? Now let's get some torches. Let's get some torches down here too. All right. There we go. Torches. Bam. Boom. And remember, when you're doing this, you're going to put torches not on the floor because the water you're using will, will wash them away. You want to put them up at least one block. Let's take a look around here. Okay, this is pretty cool. Nice. All right, so let's, be, let's not even bother with this. What we're going to do is we are going to start getting obsidian. And the way to do that, you need a diamond pick, right? And it's kind of very slow. It's, it's 13 seconds, the diamond pick, to pick obsidian. So now we've got all this obsidian, what are we going to do with it? Well, we got to find a good, safe way to dig it. So I'm working on this over here, all right? You got to find, there we go, boom. You put the water down before the lava flows in. Uh, water next to flowing lava becomes cobblestone. So now we get in this water, and now we are safe, okay? If lava comes flowing out at us, like, kabam, the water immediately <laughs> pushes us forward and then turns the lava into obsidian, and we're going to start digging away at it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, nope, that didn't work how I wanted it to. Get back, get back. Okay, so that's still very dangerous. So be very, okay, still gotta be careful. Remember, lava, carefully, carefully, carefully. That's how we work with it. All right, so do that four times. 
now that we have our obsidian, we're going to grab a bunch of this stuff while we're out here, and we're going to go over to this area and get some leather from these guys, and we're going to come back over here with all those things and go back into our basement where our crafting table is situated, along with all the other ingredients. Get down the, get down the ladder. All the other ingredients that we need. All right, let's see. What do we have in here? Uh, take this and that and this and that and this. Okay, and can we go over to our survival inventory? Yes, and put all those things in there. Great. Oh, even more than I need. So let's go in here. Here's what we need to do. We need to make a bunch of paper. Do we have paper recipes? Maybe. Oh, here we go. Bean materials, paper. Okay, so we want to make just a whole bunch of that. That, hmm. Just a whole, a whole bunch of this. Here we go. We make a bunch of those. Bam. Then you need this. You take these. You put these around there. And hey, look at that. Books. Lots of books. Books are important. So you take these down here. Let's see. This goes there. The four obsidian. These are those two diamonds we had from earlier that we were saving. And this book. Look at this. An enchanting table, which we need. Okay. So this is, we're moving up now. We're, we're getting even cooler stuff. And let's see. Once we have that, then we also need bookshelves, which I believe look like this. Correct? Yes, correct. And you need, let's see, you need a whole bunch of these. How many of these do you need? I think I need 18 bookshelves. I believe that's the correct number. So I'm also going to need a place to put all that stuff. I'm going to just put kind of uh, an addition in here where this lovely window is. So here we are, a quick little addition. Threw some torches up there. Enough room to put all these bookshelves. Now as I put these here, you should see See little magic notes. There they are, little magic notes coming from here, okay? So each one of these is putting out magic notes. Uh, they go to this, they power this, they make the enchantments on it stronger. Let's see, for instance, put this here. Um, level 12 enchantment. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. All right, but we want even better than that. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and now we get yeah, level 24. Well, that's pretty good, too, silk touch. Okay, pretty great. Let's put in a few more. It might max at that, but I, I think... Yeah, I see 30. I think that's the best we're ever going to get. But I want the rest anyway for just the way it looks. That's pretty cool. I hope no monsters spawn up here. Whoop. Let's see. Can they? Um, block 12. No, we're fine. Well, it's daytime. Ah, we'll see how it works. If any monsters spawn in here, we'll deal with it at that point. All right, so now we have this at maximum power. I put an anvil here, which you remember for we can mix enchantments and stuff. And over here, we'll keep all the lapis lazuli and stuff. But what we want to do, once we have the enchanting table, is take our diamond pick. Hopefully, I mean, that would be pretty great. And eh, we don't want Silk Touch. We want something else. But let's, you know, we got, it's creative. We can just get all sorts of stuff. Let's get some more diamond picks. Well, this was lucky. This was the first, I got this and Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3, and Silk Touch. That's pretty good. What we want is Fortune, but Silk Touch can help in the beginning. Uh, but we still want Fortune. Let's see if we can get that in creative. In fact, we can just, we can get a book. We'll just get a book, right? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Fortune 3, Efficiency 4. That's, that's a really good diamond pick. We don't need all these diamonds. There's a lot of diamond picks, though. Let's see. We don't need you. Let's get rid of you. Um, let's see. You. I don't need you. We need you? Oh, wait. We want... Wait. No, no. Where'd the good one go? Now, this is why fortune is important. Okay? So, here's all this diamond we have down here at the end. This is eight blocks of diamond. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. I think that's the best you can ever find. So, we're going to go into uh, survival to show this off. Okay, here we go. So what do we got? We got this diamond pick with fortune on it, right? Fortune three. Okay, pretty good. And we see here eight diamonds, but because of fortune, because these blocks, they don't drop blocks, they drop like items, like diamonds or coal or redstone. We're going to use this, and each time we break one of these, we'll probably get more than one diamond. So wait, break that. Oh, good. What do we get? That? Four diamonds already. So we're going to just, wow, this is nice. We're going to dig through all of these. Oh, this is very good indeed. Oh, wonderful. And what do we actually have? 25 diamonds! 25! That's more than three times what was here. That's pretty great. So that's why you want to wait until you get fortune before you start digging up all sorts of diamonds and redstone and junk, because it does the same thing with coal and with redstone, like all this redstone down here. Just real quick, just real quick, because I get I get asked this a lot. Here's here's this how this trick works, okay? You take this, you take a, a torch, kaboam, like that. You take the item frame, put it behind the torch. See, that's the torch, that's the wall. There you go. And then in there, you just put a, a slab, and there you go. That looks pretty cool. Okay, that's the trick. Okay, um, to the nether! So, when I build a nether portal to go to the nether, I like to go away from my house just a little bit. Now, you don't have to. You can build it right in your house if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Except remember that pig peoples, you know, zombie pigmens, they, they come running through the portal sometimes, and that's fine. They're not aggressive, but... You know, sometimes they're just in your house, like, oh, hey, I didn't I didn't invite you, but uh, I guess you're here now. Okay, so I went over here, because this is amazing. 
This spawned naturally. Look at this. I built this little dirt bridge, but it's not connected. It's just floating in the air. So, whoop, whoa, okay, whoops. I'm in creative, it doesn't matter. All right, so I'll fly up there. But I made this bridge so I could walk up there. I'd make a better one later if I were in survival. And we'll go up here, and I think this is a good place to make another portal. This is it's very cool. Uh, how about in here? All right, great. Can we take you down? Let's just, let's, okay, there we go. So we're going to take this, and uh, let's go here. One, two, three. Remember, you can make this smaller if you want to. Um, middle click a block in creative, remember, and you get that block. All right, so let's put this here, and you go there. And I think you go here. One, two, three. And let's just put this here. Let's get some wood, too. Bam, bam, put that there. And more obsidian. Bam, bam. And now we have this, which is really cool. Flint and steel. Kabam. And the nether. You, you remember the nether. And here we are in the nether. You might notice this nether rack is a bit brighter. That's because I, I don't like the way nether rack usually looks. So I made it a little bit brighter in my texture pack. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot more. Okay, so here we are in the nether. Once you're here, remember, you want to take a bunch of... Let's see, I think it's something like, I usually use pumpkins. I like jack-o'-lanterns, right? Take those and just mark mark your path. Remember when you're exploring, you know, as, as soon as you can't see the nether portal, go back to where you could see the nether portal, right? And just place a couple of pumpkins down. Like that's kablam, kablam. And then you look at these and you're like, okay, if I see the faces, I'm going the right way because they're like, hey, welcome home, Finn. And I go through them like this and then I'm going the right direction. Okay, so that, you can just keep doing that. You can just keep doing that. And you're going to look around for nether fortresses. Oh, I think that might be one over there. Let's see, and what direction are we facing? North and south. Okay, so nether fortresses run north and south. So once you find one, you can turn east and west to find even more of them. Is that another one over there? All right, let's go over here and see what we can find. Now, we're in creative mode, so we don't have to worry too much. Oh, no, that's just lava. We're in creative mode, we don't have to worry too much about what we're doing. So we're gonna fly east and west, but first we're gonna go back here, and we are going to make a pathway so we don't forget where we're going because that would just be awful okay where there's another portal okay so let's say we were going over here then we would want to mark this we'd say okay if we're going this way come back over here like that okay and that's how we'll do it and we'll go looking in one direction like this much faster because we're in creative oh there we go there's another fortress found it right there okay fantastic so now that we're here there's a few things we need to get from the nether fortress. I also changed the way this looks. I made it a little a little darker. Boom, boom. Let's just go in here. Okay. So, hey, guys. How's it going? Oh, wow. Look at these guys. Remember, there's treasure chests in the nether fortress, which is cool. You want those things just for funsies. You need to get a lot of nether wart. We've done that before, right? You come in here. You get the nether wart. You're very careful of these guys because they're super dangerous. And once you get some blaze rods, right, and blaze powder, then you can make potions and eyes of ender. And that's the most important part. Here's all, here's all nether wart. Great. Remember to get some soul sand, too, when you get this, because you need that to plant the nether wart in. So grab a bunch of this and a bunch of that and take that home with you, all right? And maybe grab some of these. So those are the most important things. Get nether wart, get soul sand for nether wart, and find some blazes and get some blaze rods so you can start making stuff, okay? How do I get out of here? Remember, this is important. Remember to mark your way. Even just one of these is fine. But I did not mark my way, so now I'm lost. Now, this is the point where it takes a, kind of a long time. You need lots of ender pearls in order to find the stronghold which by the way is the next step in what we're doing okay so you need a bunch of those which means you got to find a bunch of endermans uh, which means you got to wait now you've seen videos on this i have ways to do this i like to build a sort of taunting tower right where i can say hey enderman look at me and he can come running for me but he can't get to me because i'm under a thing right and then i just hit him in the feet until eventually he gives me ender pearls and so we have an entire video on that so we're not even we have two videos on that so we're not going to bother going over that today but that's what you need. You need to do a lot of that for a long time until you get a whole bunch of ender pearls and use that with blaze powder and you're going to make some eyes of ender. So let's, let's go over that. Now that we are home, we take our blaze rods there and make some blaze powder. Let's make a bunch. Let's make a whole bunch. All right, there we go. Kablam. There we go. We got all of that. We're going to take these. We're going to take a bunch of the ender pearls we have here, make a bunch more eyes of ender, right? This is the important thing. And we're going to use these to go find the stronghold. Now, I was very clever, and I built my house very close to where I originally spawned in. And the reason I did this is because the first stronghold you find is probably going to be a, about a thousand blocks away from where you first spawned in. Okay, so we've, we've done this as well, but let's kind of do it really quickly. We've got the Eyes of Ender we made, and we're going to throw it in the air. Oh, there you go. It goes that direction. We're going to fly, because we're in creative, make it faster. And that means we have to go in that direction. So let's let's go fly in this way. Now, if I were in cre uh, survival, rather, I'd probably travel this way for a while, get up on top of one of these trees, 
so I could you know, see more clearly where it's going to go and see if it still goes in that direction. It does. Okay. And so we're going to keep traveling in that direction. And every now and then I want to get up on top of something and throw it again and see, see if I need to change course. All right. And then we'll triangulate the position of the stronghold. Uh, okay. It finally turned around and it looks to be, uh, maybe it's somewhere here in this jungle, which would be great news. Yeah. It's going back here somewhere. Okay. So now this is the triangulation. We know from this point it's there. We know from over there at that point, it's going in this direction. So let's try from over here and see if we can kind of figure out where exactly that is. All right, and huzzah! Okay, good. Okay, somewhere around here then. Oh, this is very good news. Okay, we're going to keep doing this. We're flying to make this much easier for the purposes of demonstration. Ah, there we go. Yep, okay. So it's still going around here. I think we're going to try this. We're going to go right down. We're going to dig straight down huzzah! and see what we can find. Get down there. All right, there we are. We went way down. We're about on 45. Get these out of the way. Now, be careful with these. Remember, if, if you are actually in survival and you see these and you start to dig one of these and it's taking a little longer than you expect, it's not a real block. It's a silverfish. And so don't dig that block. Instead, dig around that block. All right, here we are in the strongholds. We've done a lot of videos on strongholds. We know what to do here. So from here, you're going to find the end portal. In order to find the end portal quickly, we're going to use spectator mode. If you don't know how that works, you say game slash game mode three. Okay, and now you can move through stuff. Whoa, look at that. And you can see all the stuff under there. All right, now remember, if you're actually playing in survival, this this isn't as fun, right? Because then you know where everything is and you don't know. You know you're like, oh, well, I know where everything is now. Uh, but let's try to find the end portal so we can demonstrate. Whoa, so we can demonstrate uh, what's going on. Let's see, where where might it be? Okay, we found it. So this is, oh, where? Let me land. This is how it looks every time. You usually find it. You're walking along. You're like, ah, oh, yes, this this doorway looks familiar. You see this? There'll be silverfish here. There's always a bunch of lava here, so that's be careful of that because there might be silverfish in there too, right? And now there's really no reason to keep the silverfish thing around. Some people have found obscure uses for the silverfish spawner, but they're kind of really irritating. They keep jumping out of you, knocking you back. There's lava here. Blocks keep falling apart. It's it's pure chaos, right? So, yeah, boom. Usually, it's, you break that apart is what I do. And, of course, we've seen this, right? We're going to fill this all with this business here. And now, I didn't, I haven't done it yet, but normally what I would do is use all the enchanting. Oh, nice. And the potions, right, which, again, are pretty optional, but you probably want regeneration potions, uh, which we'll talk about soon. And, whoozah, jump through here. Now, this is interesting. I'm, I'm glad that this, this happened this way, because this is one of the worst situations you can have. Okay, so I've spawned out here on this obsidian platform, which you always spawn on an obsidian platform, so you won't just fall down into the, the uncaring void out there in the end, because that's that just you keep falling. All right, so usually, though, it's connected to the world. Here, sometimes, it's not, right? I've seen one sometimes where it's, it's like over there, and you're like, oh, man, and then the Ender Dragon's out there, and he's like, hey, I'm going to come over there and uh, hit you. You're like, wait, no, 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 I, I don't have enough floor to stand on. If you hit me, I'll go flying off into the uncaring void. And then, of course, that's what you do. And that's very sad. So that's always too bad. So that's another reason why it's good to have a whole bunch of ender pearls with you. Let's see, do we have ender pearls down here? Where are they? I take a bunch of ender pearls. So you want even more ender pearls with you when you come through. So if you come through, you're like, oh, no, I, oh, I'm trapped. You go, ah, hoots, ah, throw that up there and see where you go. Oh, great. Good job. Now we're up here. Okay, so we've done a whole video on this and it took me a long time and I, I didn't do it very well. It took me a very long time to get rid of the Ender Dragon, but today we'll just demonstrate what we're going to do, right? So these crystals are very important. Let's see, we get a bow of some kind. Well, you know, we're in creative. Let's do it. So normally you get a bow, you sit down there and you start shooting up at the Hello Ender Dragon, you shoot at these, bam, and they blow up. Remember, they will blow you up if you are too close, so do not get too close. And these ones are the more difficult ones. You got to find ways to climb up here right and dig through this a little bit and then back up and hit that with an arrow so it doesn't blow you up and go flying over that way right now here's once you got all that the ender dragon's gonna fly around okay she's gonna fly around she's gonna breathe fire at you which is not nice by the way and then every now and then she's gonna swoop down here and land on this thing and when she does you come over here you run around behind her and you start hitting her feet You're like ah take this take this and try not to be too close to the wings try not to be in front of her and you know kind of off to the back here at the side and you can jump up and down and do critical hits and you've seen the video it's it's very loud in that video so i'm sorry about that okay so this that's how you do it and once you've done that this whole thing will open up 
How am I going to do this? So, in order to, to do this, I'm going to try to actually just see if I can just fight the Ender Dragon real quick. I'm going to go into a survival mode so she comes down here more often, hopefully. And I'll show you a cool trick. I just went into creative. I grabbed a bunch of armor because, you know, whatever. And I've got this cool sword with sharpness 5 on it, which is basically as good as it gets, okay? So, also, I'm going to show you this cool trick I can do. All right, let's, let's deal with this first. Hello! Notice I have this pumpkin. I'm going to put this on my head, like this. Okay, that's important. And it looks kind of funny, like this, right? But here, let's go into, let's go into survival, game mode, uh, zero. Okay, there we go. And with the pumpkin on our head, we can't see as well, but we can look directly at Endermen, and they don't get mad. They're like, hey, man, how's it going? And they don't see us. They're like, oh, pumpkin person, we don't care. Pumpkin people look at us. So this is what you do. You run over here. Ah, it's very loud. It's very loud. And you just, you know, just do, hit her in the feet. Ah, feet! Ah, feet! There we go. And the hip, I guess. There we go. Okay, there we go. Almost there. It takes a very long time. Okay, so let's get away from this. Remember, uh, there's gonna be a huge thing up there. I don't know if that hurts, but I don't want to be there for it anyway. There we go. That's cool looking, right? Nice, there we go. A bunch of experience, which is super important. There we go. And, of course, remember the, uh, the portal to the rest of the end opens up. In fact, there, let's take this off now. Let's take this off. There we go. Remember that the portal to the rest of the end opens up, and that's where you find end cities and elytra. And I've already done a, a cool video on that. And since it's not really part of winning the game, that's not something we actually have to do. And Oh, look at that. We, we won the game. I totally forgot about that. That's what we came here to do, wasn't it? To win the game. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, let's go back into creative because we need to get some cool stuff. All right, we need specifically a piston. And just bring this stuff with you next time you go. And bring some blocks. You need. You can be blocks. And we need a lever. Where's the lever? Just activate this. Because if you if you try to collect the uh, the dragon egg, it just kind of pops off into nothingness. And I think I think it can technically fall into here. I don't know if that's still true. It could at one point. Maybe they fixed that where it just can't fall into there. But we don't want that to happen, right? So we want to be very careful. Uh, build up all this. Blam, blam, and blam, and blam. Okay. Now we got that. We build this here. Um, a piston. Hootsa! Facing that way. And say, so I think we need, and you go there, and you go there, and come on. We push it, and then it becomes a small thing, and we can pick it up. Okay, great, and we we did it. Let's let's get through here. Uh, this should take us back to our bed. Oh, after you read this, this is the ending thing. It's kind of this existential, interesting introspection about the fourth wall and the fourth dimension and stuff. So if you're interested in that, just you know, take a look. Otherwise, uh, you hit escape and you get out of that. I've read it once already. And that's really all you need to do. Okay, so uh, there we go. We did it. Team, we did it. We're home. We, we, we won the game. I didn't talk about potions, and I probably should at length, but I also feel like potions are their entirely own episode. And as you saw, I didn't even have potions there. I just had magic I had diamond armor, which you can get by getting diamonds, and I had a magic sword, and it's kind of just took my time. Just wham, kabwam, kabwam. It's actually the Ender Dragon fight is actually pretty boring once you know how to do it. Okay, but that's that's how you do it, folks. You, you start there, over there, and you end over here in the end. And of course, there's end cities and elytra to do, and it's all sorts of stuff like ocean monuments and the wither to do. But we've we've done videos on all of those, and so hopefully now you uh, know how to win the game if you did not know before. And if you have any ideas about how I could win the game even better or more quickly, just you know let me know. Or if you're like Finn, this is uh, amazing. Also, just let me know. Either way. All right. Always glad to talk to you. See you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.